All right, so the conspiracy theorists over at CNN, MSNBC, mainstream media, they're at it again. Now, after failed attempts to smear President Trump with cries of Russia, 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 after claiming the president is about to start a nuclear war with North Korea, and after falsely painting the president, conservatives, Republicans as racist, 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 racist bigots, well, now the leftist hacks have created a fake news, new talking point that they want to spread, spread around in their new echo chamber. Now, members of the media elite, they know it all, and media are now pretending to be experts in psychiatry and psychology, and they have found a brand new way to try and delegitimize and destroy President Donald Trump. They are now claiming he is unhinged. He's unfit to serve. Now, here's the counsel to the president, Kellyanne Conway, firing back against this media bias earlier today on Fox and Friends. It's such an absurd analysis playing armchair psychiatrist, and it's not just him, it's a lot of people on TV. I just, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when news stations reported the news. Now, Kellyanne is spot on, and now to highlight this out-of-control bias by the leftist press, well, we're going to use this sound we used last night again tonight. Remember this? You'll hear it. Okay. So you, the American people, you can see for yourselves just how rampant this leftist Trump-hating ideology is in the leftist media. Let's just take a look at the press claiming that the president is unfit to serve. They all echo each other. Take a look. Your behavior is causing great concern among the majority of the American people. Is he suffering from some kind of illness? Is he fit for office? The only possible, and this is on Twitter, the only possible defensible explanation for Trump's disgusting, unpresidential, mm -hmm. narcissistic behavior would be early onset dementia. Maybe. <laughs> She's not the only one who's been saying, some people have been saying that for months. Has he shown that he's fit for office? No. In this moment? Absolutely not. It was an astounding chain of lies tied together by lunatic asides by a man who obviously is mentally unstable. That is not sane behavior. The only defensible excuse, the only defensible explanation is if he is not mentally well. A man who seemingly suffers from a clin clinical form of idiocy. Let me put this question. Do you think the president is stable? No. John. No. All right, so just when you thought they couldn't get any lower, this is the new standard on CNN, NBC, which apparently they have no standards anymore. But of course, the slanderous smears, they don't stop there. Now, they've also claimed President Trump is also unhinged. And again, they all echo each other. It's like they live in the same, well, fishbowl. Take a look. President Trump's speech last night, which was widely greeted in the media as unhinged and full of lies. An alarming warning from the former boss of U.S. intelligence after a wild and angry and sometimes unhinged campaign rally. He's unhinged. It's embarrassing. That was a president totally unhinged. I, there's uh, little doubt about that uh, for anyone watching. I think that the president is unfit. I think the president is unhinged. Um, but many of us have known that for 18 months. What we're dealing with right now is a, a problematic president, an irrational president. He is obviously desperate. I think he must know at some level, somewhere, that he is failing miserably. All right, now it's time for me to diagnose them. I'll, I'll put up the same degrees that they have. Right there, there's my degree. They're suffering from being a bunch of overpaid, pampered, way out of touch people that have no clue what life is like for real Americans and they're suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. See, I got my degree. Now, whatever happened to the media reporting truth and facts and being fair, balanced, objective, what we're seeing now is beyond media malpractice. They are doing a tremendous disservice to you, the American people and the country, by continually spreading lies and falsehoods about the president and advancing their agenda. Now, they're, they're so blinded by this hatred of the president, it makes them completely, seemingly incapable now to hardly ever tell the truth. And don't forget, these so-called journalists, they're supposed to be informing you about the news of the day. They're the ones, they were the same people exposed by WikiLeaks for doing what? colluding with Hillary Clinton's campaign. Now take a look at the examples right there on the side of your screen. The media has been exposed again and again and again as being massive purveyors of phony fake news. And that's why the president rightly continues to call them out almost on a daily basis. Now it has created in this country a massive informational crisis and 
Right now, the left has zero credibility with most people. Just look at their approval ratings. The press is so fixated on going after this president and taking him down and his family down and the people close to him down. Well, they don't care any longer about getting it right, and they don't care about telling the truth. That's sad. One example we have recent is the New York Times. Earlier this month, they were reporting that Vice President is running a shadow campaign on planning on running against the president in 2020. The Vice President said it's absolutely false. That is one of literally hundreds of examples of fake news. And instead of reporting the facts, the liberal press, they're more focused on advancing their leftist ideological extreme political agenda. They create conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. They smear the president every single chance they get now. And the media, well, they never reported the truth about the mess that President Obama left behind. And they're not reporting on what this president has accomplished, what his agenda is, what his solutions are, and how he's trying to fix things. They seemingly don't care about the people that should matter the most. The forgotten men, the forgotten women of this country who made the big difference in this election that are suffering daily. Now, I honestly think we're the only show that talks regularly. 50 million Americans on food stamps, 13 million more under Obama, 50 million Americans in poverty, 8 million more after Obama, 95 million Americans out of the labor force. Now it's down to 94 million. But under Obama, the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s. Under Obama, the worst re economic recovery since the 40s. The lowest home ownership rate under Obama in 51 years. And Obama doubled the national debt. And I can go on all night. Now, these are facts. The media never told you the entire election season about these things. And now that President Trump is in office, well, now the media is changing their tactics. They just refuse to report on this president's accomplishments because, what, it'll make them look good? Now, since members of the lazy press, they aren't interested in doing their job, well, I guess I'll do it for them. Here's everything. We'll go through the whole list tonight that the media will not tell you about the president's accomplishments. And by the way, this is not even a full list. And to emphasize all of these, we'll, we'll go back and we'll bring our ding sound back to get the tone deaf media's attention. Let's go through them. He nominated, the Senate confirmed, the originalist he promised, Neil Gorsuch for the Supreme Court. The stock market is now at an all-time high. Consumer confidence is at a 16-year high. Under President Trump, more than a million jobs have been created for people who need them. Mortgage applications for those new homes now has gone up to a seven-year high. Unemployment rate right now, under President Trump, a 16-year low. The president signed the Promoting Women and Entrepreneurship Act. Success. He's gutted Obama-era regulations. The president has also ended the war on coal. He weakened these ridiculous Dodd-Frank regulations. The Trump administration is promoting buying and hiring American. We need the jobs. We're seeing investments from major businesses. Foxconn, Toyota, Ford, all these others promising to spend millions on plants and factories and manufacturing centers here in America. The president's policies have greatly reduced illegal immigration by over 70 percent. Bids for the border wall, that's underway. President's trying to secure congressional funding. That's a win. The administration's fighting back against sanctuary cities. The president created the Victims of Immigration Crime Engagement Office. He's changed the rules of engagement against ISIS. He drafted a plan to defeat ISIS. The president worked to reduce the cost of the F-35 fighter jet, saving you money. The White House imposed a five-year lobbying ban. The president sanctioned Iran over its missile program. And as commander-in-chief, he responded to serious use of chemical weapons. The White House also introduced the tax reform plan. The administration is renegotiating NAFTA. The president withdrew from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, another campaign promise. He removed the United States out of the Paris Accords, another key promise. The president created a task force to reduce crime. The Justice Department is targeting brutal gangs like MS-13. The president signed an executive order to promote energy independence, which we need, and economic growth. He signed executive orders to protect police officers. He signed an executive order to target drug cartels. The president also signed an executive order for religious freedom. The Trump administration is working to send education back to the states, which is smart. The president's fixing 
Finally, the Department of Veterans Affairs. The Supreme Court upheld part of the president's temporary travel ban executive order. The president authorized the construction of the Keystone Pipeline, the Dakota Access Pipeline. He created a commission on election fraud. He's created a commission on opioid addiction. The White House is combating human trafficking. The president rolled back President Obama's ridiculous Cuba policy. Food stamp use is now in this country at a seven-year low after soaring under Barack Obama with 13 million more Americans on food stamps. The president reduced the White House payroll. That saves you, the taxpayer, millions of dollars. The president's donating his salary. And finally, the president has signed 52 pieces of legislation. Have you heard any of this from the Destroy Trump media? Any of it? Have you ever heard them talk about solutions to the numerous problems we have, real national security concerns? Because what we told you is the truth about the president's accomplishments. They never talk about it. He's getting a lot of things done, frankly, despite very little help from both parties in Congress. And despite, despite a media that utterly wants to destroy him every day. They wake up. How can we destroy him today? This hatred against the president is beyond out of control. It needs to stop. It probably won't. But I have a message for the Democrats. I have a message even for weak Republicans and all of these people in the mainstream media. I'm sure you all love your country, right? Do you want to make America great again, you and the media? Because if you want to make America great and you want to help the people you claim to have a, a monopoly of compassion on, solve the country's problems. You got that, Democrats, media? Tell, offer solutions occasionally on your shows. And the Democratic Party, no, is not the answer to anything. And maybe the media will stop bludgeoning the president politically with your daily lies. And maybe you can start thinking about working for the American people. I'm frankly disgusted with both parties. I'm, I'm disgusted with the sewer. I'm disgusted with the swamp that is known as Washington, D.C. Why? Because the American people, millions of them, the forgotten men and women in this country, and I started out with pretty much nothing in my adult life, they need help. And guess what? America's enemies are really, really dangerous. Just think for a moment. Just imagine for one moment. If we could just pull together as a country, this is a couple of years, if the country would unite, there's no limits to just how great and prosperous and safe and secure this country will be.